Hello guys, thank you very much for tuning in to thelonewolf.com. Robert here, and today we're gonna to be giving you a first ride review on this brand new bike from Scottish brand Deviate Cycles. This is their high single pivot enduro race machine, the Deviate Claymore. Now we've had this bike for the last few days, riding the trails here of the Tweed Valley that recently hosted the Enduro World Series. So we've been giving it a fairly good shakedown, but this has only been a very short term review. Um, so don't take any of our kind of impressions as absolute final word, um, but certainly we put plenty of miles, plenty of vert into this bike and uh, got it set up, balanced, feeling good. So I think we can uh, give you a pretty good idea of what you're gonna experience if you purchase one of these for yourself. Before we get on to the final ride impressions though, let's dive into some of the specs and uh, walk you through DBA's new Claymore Enduro bike. So for their new Claymore, DV8 said the design brief was to create an enduro bike capable of winning on the toughest of enduro stages with pedal performance to match a trail bike and an element of playfulness for those days when you're not in between the tape. What does that mean? Well, DV8 gave the new Claymore 165 millimeters of rear wheel travel using their high single pivot suspension system. Uh, the shock is driven by a linkage that sits below the bottom bracket and there's an idler in place to allow them to control the chain forces uh, from ne negatively affecting the suspension, but we'll get onto that into a, in a minute. Um, there's 29 inch wheels on both ends. It's made for a 170 to a 180 mil fork. This came with a 170. Uh, felt pretty balanced to match that 165 mil out back. Um, so for this uh, Claymore, DV8 continues to use the high single pivot suspension system that they had on their Highlander that we previously got in for a little dissected feature a couple of years ago. Um, and this high pivot system effectively allows the rear wheel to move uh, backwards as well as upwards out of the way of the impacts, which should in theory allow the rear wheel to track the terrain a little bit better, make it a bit smoother on your feet and uh, give you a little bit more grip through rough terrain. Um, but it also means that when you're deep into your travel, that rear wheel is getting further away from the bottom bracket, increasing your wheelbase and therefore increasing your stability too. So it means that when you're hitting really hard compressions at speed, the bike isn't getting shorter and twitchier, it's getting longer and a little bit more stable, which should in theory give you a little bit more confidence. Um, this uh, movement of the rear wheel away from the bottom bracket also uh, produces a lot of anti-rise or brake squat. Um, which can be considered a negative or a positive. In DV8's case, uh, they're saying that it allows the bike to maintain its geometry when you're hard on the brakes, which, especially in steep terrain, should lead to a slightly more confident response. Um, but it also means that the suspension does feel to firm up when you're in its travel uh, on the brakes, which might not suit everybody, um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the ride impressions. So in the chain line, you will notice there is a big idler wheel just sitting, uh, you know, a couple of inches above the front chain ring. This is an 18 tooth idler that runs on dual seal bearings. And what it allows DV8 to do is tune the anti-squat and the pedal kickback kinematics to their liking by moving the idler uh, up and down and around. You'll notice that it does not sit concentrically to the main pivot. It sits slightly below it which means that there is still some element of pedal kickback in play. Um, but whether you feel that on the trail or not, we'll get onto in a little bit. Um, the anti-squat figures that they went for are reasonably high. And what that allows the bike to do is sit up in its travel as you're pedaling hard, instead of bobbing up and down with your body weight as you're pedaling, which should in theory produce a more efficient pedaling response that's better suited to big miles out on the hill or uh, gives you a little bit more pep when you're putting down the watts, when you're trying to race to the finish line of enduro stage. With the Claymore, DV8 has covered all of the sort of main desirable features that you'd expect to see on a modern enduro bike. There's a big carbon bolt-on down tube protector to keep the frame safe. Um, there's a threaded bottom bracket, which should eliminate the chances of creaking in use. Um, boost rear end, tapered head tube, and DV8 opted to go for a 34.9 millimeter seat tube, which gives you uh, or the dropper post a little bit more room for its internals. It also means that the dropper can be fully slammed and sit really flush and neat inside the, uh, the seat tube, which looks really clean if your legs are short enough, I guess, to have that dropper slammed all the way down. 
unlike mine, which is uh, quite a bit out of the frame there. Um, the cable management is quite interesting. Rather than going for a full internal cable routing like we're uh, used to seeing these days, Deviate instead opted to go for a cable gutter which sits underneath the top tube. Um, the cables are then bolted up, they're hidden out of the way, uh, but it means that with a couple of Allen key uh, bolts you can then quickly pop them out and uh, make for a slightly easier servicing. It is still internal on the rear end though, um, so you're not completely free of internal cable routing, but it should be a little bit easier to fish those out of the rear end. Uh, I believe that they are guided ports uh, to make life a little bit easier. You just push it in one end and it comes out the other. The geometry figures on the Claymore are definitely on the progressive end of the spectrum, but they're far from ridiculous because DV8 did want to maintain an element of agility and playfulness with the Claymore to, me to make sure that when you're riding the bike outside of the racetrack, you still have some fun on your local trails or the slightly less gnarly stuff. So with that, uh, they offer a medium to extra large size range. You've got reach figures from 460 millimeters on the medium through to 520 millimeters on the extra large. The large I tested at six foot two or 189 centimeters has a 490 millimeter reach with a 630 mil stack. And that adds up to a 1,268 millimeter wheelbase, which is fairly long. And do remember that this extends as you go into the travel, at least in the rear end. Uh, meaning that it may feel slightly longer than that in use as you go deep in the travel and you hit stuff hard. The head tube angle is 64.3 degrees, so not the slackest you'll see these days with some bikes coming with 63 degree head, head tube angles, um, but certainly within the kind of acceptable uh, range these days. The seat tube angle is an actual angle of 78 degrees. Uh, it's not offset, so everybody will benefit from that same angle. So quite nicely upright and centered, which should make steep climbing pretty easy. Um, seat tube lengths are short across the size range and the insertion depths are long. So everybody should be able to get a really nice long travel dropper in there to uh, you know, give yourself all that good clearance for the steep terrain that this bike loves. The chain stays come in at 441 millimeters static, but do remember that they extend as the bike goes through its travel. So they may feel slightly longer than that. And the bottom bracket sits at 30 millimeters below the axle, which is a fairly average figure these days. The Deviate Claymore can be purchased from a select few retailers or directly from the Deviate website. It comes in at a price tag of £2,999 for the frame only with some accompaniments, um, or you can purchase it with a shock for uh, roughly £3,600. So it's certainly not a budget bike, but um, let's move on to the performance out on the trail and see if it has the performance to match that price tag. I'm not saying that is the Claymore's forte, but the Claymore lets you play more than you might expect. So being an enduro bike, obviously you cannot get up to the top of the trails without either walking it, which nobody wants to do, or more importantly, pedaling it. So let's talk a little bit about the pedaling characteristics of this. I must say I'm uh, pretty damn impressed by how well this thing climbs. There's enough pedaling support in an upright centered seat, seat in position that just makes it disguise its charging capabilities on the way down so well. And uh, you can maybe just about hear the noise of the idler beginning to creep in. Probably put in about 10 miles today since the chain was lubed and it does dry out and uh, start to add in a little bit of noise as you go. But honestly, I don't think it's creating enough drag to worry about it. Certainly doesn't slow you down too much. Thanks to that 
good support. It's just generally a pleasant bike to climb. And uh, also when you're pedaling on flat terrain, that support pays dividends as well. Really quite impressive. Yum. Moving on to the proper descents, and that's when the Claymore becomes quite interesting, really. Um, certainly, if you're able to let off the brakes, charge hard, there's so much good to say about this bike. It's stable, it's uh, supportive, there's enough of a platform that you can pump hard and generate speed yourself. It's not a completely like wallowy bike that loves to dive deep into the travel. It does still have that platform for you to push off of. Um, there's enough pop and it's a reasonably lightweight to the point you can still pop and play about on the trail. Um, and then the suspension sensitivity when you hold it wide open and you're hitting repeated compressions or going over washboard roots and rocks on the trail is really, really incredible. And it honestly charges as hard as any bike in this category that I've ridden for quite a long time. Um, so Deviate has really done something incredible there. However, the one thing that the bike is held back a little bit by, in my mind, certainly for when you're attacking rough and rugged terrain, especially if you don't know the trail very well, so you don't know where the braking zones are, and uh, you're sort of maybe dragging the brake a little bit more than you, you certainly should be, which I'm certainly guilty of, is the, the, the anti-rise, the brake squat, is reasonably um, high, almost excessive, to be honest. So if you are on that brake, uh, dragging it or breaking through choppy, rough terrain, that rear end really firms up. It doesn't rise, you don't get pitched forward over the bars, um, but it certainly firms up to the point that it can become quite uncomfortable, especially on extended descents where you don't know them and you're breaking in the wrong places through rough terrain, which of course is an element of rider technique to that. I don't feel like there's many people, apart from the, the top of the top, who are able to control their braking so well, um, especially on blind trails, to the point that that won't be at least, maybe not a problem, but a consideration that a rider should be making if they're gonna buy this bike. Can you deal with it firming up a little bit in your braking zones? I certainly could. Once you sort of get your brain programmed to break in the most ideal areas, just searching for that smooth bit of ground, especially if you load up the bike hard, you can scrub off a huge amount of speed um, with, in, a, in a short amount of time, but you do have to just be a lot more considerate of your braking zones on this than many of the other bikes on the market, I would say. Um, but I don't think there's a bike out there that's really not got one slight trait to it that's not as good as the rest. And the way this thing goes through rough terrain, the stability at speed is so good that um, honestly, I, I am very sad to be giving it back soon uh, because I'd love to get more time on it because it's been an absolute pleasure to ride. Um, this is just a first ride review. So I do hope you've enjoyed checking it out and uh, learning a little bit more about my uh, first few days on board the DV8 Claymore. Certainly this is not a bike that I would be um, hesitant to recommend to somebody looking to charge the most rough and rugged terrain after my first few days on it. In terms of longevity, I've obviously not been able to put that to the test at all, um, but if DV8 kind of uh, their, their ethos about being designed for Scotland and the adverse weather is anything to go by, then you shouldn't really have to worry too much um, so long as they've not made any uh, bad decisions on the bike in the long run. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed checking out this video on the Deviate Claymore and uh, do drop us a comment to let us know your thoughts on this bike and be sure to subscribe to the channel to check out more awesome content on awesome bikes like this. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. I hope to catch you out on the trails.